In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Word has become flesh, and we have seen his glory.
Heavenly Father, you have assured us that all those who call on you in faith will never be sent away empty. Therefore, we come to you in lowliness and sorrow, seeking your forgiveness. We have broken your commandments and have nothing to offer you, but you have given us your Son, born to be our Savior. Therefore, we pray, have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. O most merciful God, you have sent your Son to be born for us, to die for us, and to rise for us. For his sake, grant us remission of all of our sins. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For to you is born this night in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Therefore, by virtue of the forgiveness won by our Savior and by his authority, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, you made this holy night to shine from the brightness of the true light. Even as we have known the wonder of his light here on earth, may we also behold him in all his glory in the life to come. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A lesson from Micah chapter 5, beginning with verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. 
He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. The word of the Lord. We join to sing Psalm 96 as it's printed in your worship folder. A lesson from 1 John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father, and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all, If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. The word of the Lord. We continue as we join to sing hymn 44 as our verse of the day.
a lesson from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen again to our first lesson, Micah chapter 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. My dear fellow visitors to the manger of our Savior Jesus Christ. It was troubling times. Troubling times for the nation of Judah. To be sure, there was some success among the people. There was some wealth to be had for the people, but troubling times nonetheless, when the prophet Micah wrote. The prophet opens up his words by telling us when it was that he wrote, as he spoke that he wrote during the times of King Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. That's roughly 750 years before Christ. These kings spanned the time of the destruction of their brothers to the north, the kingdom of Israel. Those were certainly frightening times for that nation of Israel. When enemies were threatening, and when God's own prophets were speaking warnings about enemies that would come to them as well. The prophet Micah was a contemporary of Isaiah, who also wrote of these coming troubles to Judah. And yet on this Christmas Eve, as we gather to worship, we know what else the prophet Isaiah and as well the prophet Micah wrote. He wrote of beautiful truths, giving specific details about events to come that would directly affect this nation of Judah and directly affect all of us. So Micah also, in the midst of a prophecy of trouble and hardship for the people of God, gives words of encouragement with great specificity about what would take place when the Messiah who had been promised would come to deliver his people. So the text that's before us today from Micah chapter 5. May God bless us as we ponder these words for a few brief moments and look at the details that Micah gives about the coming Messiah. Details which were fulfilled the first time that Christmas came when Christ was born. Micah tells us about a city, a child, a king. Where would you expect royalty to come? The Pope visited the United States not too long ago. You know where he visited? Washington, D.C., New York City, and Philadelphia. No cities in the Midwest. No major, no minor villages or small towns. That's what you expect of royalty. That's what you expect of important people in high positions. The big city. So perhaps the people of Micah's time perhaps would have expected that as well for Micah to report about something that would happen significant in Jerusalem or something significant in Samaria, Bethel or Dan, Ramah or Gilgal, but not Bethlehem. So the words came as a surprise, the words of Micah. You, Bethlehem Ephrathah. There was another Bethlehem, a Bethlehem in Zebulun, But the prophet makes clear it was not that Bethlehem. The Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, of all the cities 
all of the place where thousands gather in cities. You, Bethlehem, very small. Something significant will come. Of course, you recognize the town Bethlehem because this was not just any small town. This small town had seen the rise of another from its ranks to power. It was King David, that young shepherd boy, the youngest of seven brothers, who was chosen by God after Saul to be the next king of Israel. And yet Bethlehem remained a little town. Until Micah spoke God's promise. You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. As small and seemingly, seemingly insignificant as this town of Bethlehem was, a king would come from there. God would make Bethlehem great. That's what God does. He makes the small great. A town of seeming insignificance will be the birthplace of the greatest person ever to be born among man. That is what God has done for us too. Something small and made it great. For us with the birth of this child, for us with the Christ who came to be our Savior, he came for a people that did not deserve it. Of all the creation, of all of, all of God's creatures, the vastness of the universe, the stars in the sky, all of the creatures on the earth, God sent his Son for lowly mankind. And not just any mankind, the very mankind that rebelled against him with sin. That sin brought death into this world. And yet lowly mankind, God makes great by sending his son for it. Our transgressions are a stench in the nostrils of God. But to us, God sends a savior. And that savior would be born in this little town of Bethlehem, making the small great. But how would we know? How would we know then when the Savior has come to us, what would this greatness be? Micah tells us. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. Micah speaks about abandonment for the children of Israel, for God's people. The northern tribes would be lost, as I said, and scattered. That nation of Judah also would be taken captive. Not much to look forward to, was there, for the people of Judah. But Micah tells them that their trouble would come to an end, because a deliverer would come. And what would be the sign of that deliverer coming when God would come to rescue his people? How would it come? A child. When she who is in labor gives birth. God would become a human being to save his people. The Messiah, the Savior of the world, would be a child. Now the word, these words of the prophet Micah would not have been some obscure reference to a child being born of a woman to deliver his people. Remember, this is the very promise that God had made to Adam and Eve from the very beginning. The seed of the woman, the offspring of the woman, against whom... Satan is warring, would come and crush the devil's head. And that promise went through the ages to Abraham when he said, your offspring, a child of your own body, would come, from whom all nations on earth would be blessed. And that promise went from Abraham to his son Isaac, to his son Jacob, to his great-grandson David, then even to Mary. This child from his own body, this child, promise of a child to save was nothing new. 
You'll remember that Isaiah, at the same time a contemporary of Micah, was speaking of such a promise to Hezekiah. As he said, the virgin will be with child and give birth to a son. And you will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. That blessed child was not just for Israel. That blessed child came to be the savior of the world. What a joyful child, what a blessed child it was when that Savior came. The angels announced his birth and said, Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. That's when deliverance comes. Look at the great things that this child will accomplish. The prophet Micah goes on, He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. The picture of a shepherd is used often in the Old Testament to describe the loving care of a king for his people. It's a picture that's very common. The way a shepherd looks after his sheep, cares for his sheep, and guards for his keep, Sheep, so a king looks after, cares for, and guards his sheep. So this child would come to be a king, a great shepherd king. But his protection would not be like the protection of any other king. His care and protection would come with the strength of the Lord. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. It's good to have a strong military strength, isn't it? One nation will think twice about attacking another nation when they know that a response would come back with much greater force. There is no greater strength than the strength of the Lord God. There is no stronger force than God's force. His greatness knows no limits. His strength has no boundaries. His greatness reaches to the ends of the earth. But look at this great king. A child born in a manger. What a difference from what we might expect from the greatness of our God. A child born to Mary and Joseph. Travelers who will produce the king of all the world. One who rules with the strength of God. The strangest of the paradox doesn't, begin, doesn't end just at his birth. Here the child would grow up and wander from town to town, no place to lay his head. Here a child would gather around him common fishermen as his followers. So little about him expresses greatness or strength. Sure, there are moments, glimpses of his greatness with the miracles that he did, but just as quickly he said, don't tell anyone about them. Ultimately, until this great king went off to die. Imagine this. One who rules in the strength of the Lord gives up his life to die? That doesn't sound like the Messiah of Micah's prophecy. In the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. But God's strength does not come in the way that the world sees strength. The Apostle Paul spoke of the strength of God, unlike the strength of the world. It puts the world's strength and might to shame. He says, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Here truly is our God, whose greatness knows no bounds. Here is our God, the one who comes to give us peace. This peace is ours because this king ruled over all of our foes for us to conquer the devil, take away his power to accuse and condemn, to conquer sin which was brought into the world by us 
to conquer even death by his own death. So the death has lost its grip on us. That's what a king does for us. He rules. He rules by giving us peace. That's what the angel said that night to the shepherds, peace on earth to men on whom his favor rests. This is why John spoke of the fellowship that we have with God because the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sins. This is the peace that our God brings in the king that he sent to us at Christmas who rules with the strength of God. He comes to rule by his death so that we might have life. That is the strength of our God. A city, Bethlehem Ephrathah, small, but the source of God's Messiah. A child, born of a woman, to redeem those under law, to buy you back from sin, death, and the devil. A king, to rule with the strength of God, yet displayed his strength by defeating our enemies by his sacrifice on the cross. That's the promise that, Messiah, that Micah gave about the Messiah. He spoke of great things for his people. Though trouble was on the horizon for that nation, God would send his deliverer. And how would they know? A city, a child, a king. My dear friends, Micah spoke great things for us as well. And in the midst of any troubles that are in our lives, stress or loneliness, fear or heartache, Micah speaks of our Messiah. He came. We're here to celebrate it tonight. In Bethlehem, a child to be our king. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offering.
Our service continues with the responsive Christmas prayer found in your worship folder, and then we'll turn to page 32 for the communion liturgy. Let us pray. O gracious and almighty Father, we praise you that you kept your ancient promises by sending your everlasting Son in human flesh. You sent Jesus as a lowly child to demonstrate your concern for all, the weak and lonely, the troubled and frightened, the timid and helpless. No one is overlooked by your ever-seeking eyes. No one is excluded from your upholding arms. No one is denied the comfort and help of your outstretched hand. You sent Jesus as the Savior of the world to deliver all from the curse of sin, the power of death, and the torment of hell. He took our place. He was born under the law to set us free. He became the innocent lamb of sacrifice. He came to die and rise again in order that we might live eternally. Firmly implant this good news in our hearts and fill us with an eager desire to spread the word concerning what we have heard tonight. You sent Jesus as the light of the world to drive out all darkness that would rob us of the full life that you intend for us. May the joy that will be for all people be our joy. May the peace on earth to all on whom his favor rests be our peace. May the treasure that Mary pondered in her heart be our treasure. We pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. When the time had fully come, he sent his Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Now have come the salvation and the power and the the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, 
drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Sing his praise, tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen.
Good evening. Good evening. A blessed Christmas to you all. Thank you uh, to Professor Praber, Len Praber, for uh, his work on the organ, to Kevin Needham, our choir director, and the members of the choir who beautified our service, uh, to Kurt Sereski, who, who sang a beautiful solo in the pre-service. Thank you all for, for joining here for this worship. Uh, we, we sleep in heavenly peace too, don't we? Because of the peace that our Savior gives us. And may God give you that peace tonight, tomorrow, and, and forever.